Warning, this content is for entertainment and educational purposes only. I do not make any warranties to its accuracy, applicability, or completeness. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice. Always seek the advice of a qualified health provider. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of any information presented here. I disclaim all liability to any party for direct, indirect, implied, punitive, special, incidental, or other consequential damages arising directly or indirectly from its use. Hey guys, it's Paul. Today we're going to talk about a sensitive topic. What kills bodybuilders? If you don't want to die, this is an important one. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, so many people get worried about things like insulin and insulin's the boogeyman. Insulin kill, you know, insulin can kill you in a, in a second, which I don't disagree with. Insulin can kill you if you fuck up, but I haven't heard of any bodybuilders dying from insulin. I <laughs> So we're going to talk about the things that really kill bodybuilders and the things that you should be worried about. Before we do so, please take the time to subscribe to my channel. It's the best way you can show your appreciation for all this free content I'm putting out. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button. If you want to follow me, I am on Instagram at Paul K. Barnett. If you want to get in contact with me about coaching, you can do so by emailing me at bigp3rd at gmail.com. Both are in the video description below. Um, if you can't remember that, if you have questions or comments, put them in the comment section below. I'll do my best to answer each and every one of them. All right, so chronically and acutely, there's two things Two things we have to think about here with, with deaths. Chronically are... are from the accumulated effects of years and years and years of our lifestyle and PED use, et cetera, um, things that will catch up with you over the long term. And acutely, that thing that you do that could kill you right now. Uh, you make a mistake today, you die, you, you die right now. Um, so those are the two things that we're going to think about. And I'm not saying this is the definitive list, but this when you when you sit sit back and think about it critically, the things that most bodybuilders die from are really from this list I have here. So chronically, we have cardiovascular events and we have kidney disease or a combination of both. So think about all the people that recently passed away. We have George Peterson. We have Dallas McCarver. We have Sean Roden. We, we um, have Boston Lloyd. Uh, what do all these guys have in common? They all died of a cardiovascular event. And Dallas, or I'm sorry, and um, uh, Boston Lloyd also was in kidney failure, which may have contributed to his cardiovascular event. So kidneys and cardiovascular health, chronically, long-term, from long-term abuse, are what will, will kill, kill, kill a bodybuilder. And you have to be aware of this. So so when we think about car cardiovascular, we're talking about heart attacks, strokes, and heart failure. Um, so heart enlargement from, from years and years of PED abuse, we have that to contend with. High blood pressure, which probably contributes to all of these. Um, doing Not doing enough cardio. I mean, guys just think cardio is an optional thing. <laughs> I've been guilty of it. I, I don't do cardio the way I should sometimes. Poor choices of PED compounds they use using the most toxic cardio toxic compounds that you possibly can use years on end with high doses and and expecting the results not to catch up with you and a poor lipid management you know from poor diet oral steroid abuse and just being unlucky with your genes sometimes. Um, you know, so these are the things that we, we have to think about with, with cardiovascular disease. Um, um, and then, then you have kidney disease. Kidney disease is caused by poor compound choice and, um, long-term high blood pressure, high hematocrit levels, uncontrolled blood sugar. These all can contribute to kidney disease. Acutely. The guy that just drops all over dead out of nowhere, almost always in bodybuilding, it is a heart arrhythmia. You have a sudden cardiac event that wasn't from any of these chronic conditions. Um, 
And usually when people die acutely in bodybuilding, it is at the end of contest prep when they're very depleted and they throw in diuretics. Diuretics, in my opinion, are the most dangerous drug that bodybuilders use. Uh, I, you know, people talk about DNP, people talk about uh, insulin. I, you know, what I, I hear people falling over dead all the time from diuretics. Just do. Haven't, haven't heard that many from the other things. Not saying you can't die from those things and that you should be using those things, but I'm just saying this is what usually kills bodybuilders. So you have to consider that. Um, all right. So how do we mitigate, um, these potential risk factors, you know, safest way to be is just not to take the stuff at all. Then you don't have to worry about any of this shit, but we know you're not going to do that. So since you're not going to do that, we have to mitigate risk factors. So number one, and I, I preach this over and over and over and over and over and over again. Dudes somehow have this misconception that the most co toxic compounds give the best results. I want to take DHB. I want to take. Uh, I want to take Trin. I want to take Anadrol year round and 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 blast those things in high doses, and they expect that they're going to get huge, more huge than anybody else from taking extremely toxic compounds. You don't have to take toxic compounds to get big. You don't. So why take them? Stick with the stuff that's safer, stuff that has a long track record of human use. Uh, I, you know, so I mean, you you look at growth hormone, testosterone, insulin; those, those have more data about human use than just about any other drug known to man. So why wouldn't you build your cycle around those things? Eat a low fat, low cholesterol diet. I see these dudes doing these fucking keto diets or just dirty balking or, or eating fucking carnivore diets that are just loaded with saturated fats and not expecting to have heart conditions, you know, arterial blockages and things like that down the road. Not smart. Don't smoke. Don't drink. Don't take recreational drugs. It's another thing. You're an idiot if you take mixed recreational drugs with PEDs. You're just asking for it. Um, control your blood sugar. Um, this is one I struggle with. Um, you know, if your blood sugar is out of control, it will cause problems. Um, cascading problems with other systems in your body. Uh, you know, the ways we can do that primarily is diet and cardio. Uh, metformin, insulin. You know, those are options. Uh, control your blood pressure. This is a very, very basic one. And I think... Probably next to choosing the correct compounds, the second easiest, most important thing that you can do is to take a fucking blood pressure med, preferably an ARB. Talmasartan seems to be the best, but anything's better than nothing. Most of these problems, kidney disease, cardiovascular disease, usually the, the number one contributing factor to all this stuff, heart enlargement, is uncontrolled high blood pressure from PED abuse. So why not? It, it blows my mind that guys will want to take all these different co toxic com compounds and they're scared to take a fucking blood pressure pill. Makes no sense to me. Um, diagnostic testing, getting regular diagnostic testing done, cardiac CT scan, blood work, and ECG. I, I get blood work done like every two months. I get a, a cardiac CT scan done once a year. I so saw Antoine Valiant just reported that his cardiac CT scan came back high. Um, but fortunately, he didn't have any blockages yet, at least so that they could see, so he could get out ahead of it and fix it before it's a huge problem. If he had just kept going the way he would was, he probably would have ended up with a artery blockage, coronary artery blockage, and had a heart attack and died. So things like that that can save you. Anyway, guys, be smart. I, I, you know, I know a lot of people get upset when, you know, when, when I, I, I'm telling people how to be safer with the PED use. The reality is a lot of guys that are using PEDs aren't going to stop. And my goal is harm reduction to inform, 
to help people make better decisions. It's like wearing a helmet when you're riding your motorcycle, putting a jacket on, not driving 200 miles an hour. You're going to lower your chances of dying if you take those steps to mitigate risk. All right, guys. Have a great day.